So I'd like to begin with a meditation, and this is from the Zohar, which is a book of mystery. So, what is a human being? Is a human being simply skin, flesh, blood, veins, nerves, muscles, and tissue? No. That which consists of real person is that person. garments that cover one their essence. When a person departs this earth, the person puts off the outer covering and continues to live by virtue of the soul, which is beyond death. both humbling and chastising to wear one's shroud once a year. Rabbi, uh, the poet Leah Goldberg wrote, contemporary Hebrew poet, the call de variate with a hot shell marble. Everything there is at least one eighth of death. What it weighs is enough. Bernie was a man who was full of life, strength, courage, but he was in the business that you know, made one aware that death is always a present, present that life isn't always safe. He dedicated his career to protecting others, providing personal protection for them. And in the last couple of years, he was also aware of the with nature of life as he was dealing with great illnesses. He carried it with him. It seems with a tranquil grace. And it wasn't heaven. From what I heard, he lived fully with love, with his friends, with Charlie the very end. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Kohala, we have a very famous passage. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. The call of the mind The preacher wrote, a time to be born and a time to die. Death complements life. Death and birth form the bookends of life. Death in between them is a life filled with abundance of things. to harvest with the hope that we can see our dreams fulfilled. There's a time to kill, weeding a garden, drinking the soul, stopping the practice, getting the past, closing the job. There's a time to forgive, finding the one who wants to be done, forgiving the pain, return home. There's a time to break down the soul that of breaking down the walls 
time to cast away stones, clearing a field for planting. It is time to gather stones together, building a house for covering the ground. Live with integrity and do what is right. Speak the truth without deceit. Have no slander upon your tongue and do no evil to others. Do not mistreat your neighbor. Burn a contemptible person, but honor those who revere the blessed one. Never retract a promise once made, and though it may bring you harm. Lend no money at unfair rates. Accept no bribe against the innocent. Make these deeds your own. You shall stand forever. O te ele, lo ye most leolai. Thank you again for telling me about uh, Bernie's seems like colorful life. years and months with him. He carried his mother's photo with him at all times. It was in his wallet. I think they're going to put that, that photo with him still. So that she'll always be close.
expecting them in Atlantic City and other places throughout the world. I can't really imagine that, that sort of responsibility that one has when one's in the land with no bodyguard. So how alert one has to be, how one has to watch everything that's going on. How one has to be not only sensitive to the to the environment, all those things around you, but also very sensitive to the very drove back and forth from Florida innumerable times. And uh, Barry told me he drove with uh, more enthusiasm than care. <laughs> and, uh, and not that he uh, got a lot of tickets. He was just so excited about life. And he was trying to figure out this thing. He wanted to do all sorts of things all the time. He had a particular love for animals. He loved having two dogs. Today we have Charlie here, who will not speak. <laughs> I can get him to speak. Yeah. I would, but I don't like to show off. But there may be other people who like to share some words, so if you wish to share a few words, this is a good time to do so. wants to be first. I'll be first. Okay. I don't know if I want to. I, I can't be shy. It doesn't matter. We're all wearing masks. So it doesn't no, I have so many things in my head. Tell us who you are. I'm Bonnie Voss. And Bernie walked up to me, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago while I was at the gym. So one of the rare times that I went. He walked up, hi, I'm Bernie Bolnick. And my dad was a dentist in Millville for until he was 92. And I said, well, I'm Bonnie Voss. He's like, oh, BB, BB, BB. You know, um, my dad is a dentist in Richmond. My dad went on to practice till he was 91. And he's like, oh, my dad had milk cattle. I'm like, my dad had beef cattle. So for some stupid reason, right there in that moment, we were bonded. And we're both a little eccentric. And um, some things like when you bring up driving to Florida. Okay, so maybe. Um, the last time I saw Barry was your birthday or his birthday. We were at the Daytona. And I had driven, I don't even know what kind of little truck it was with a cap on the back with all Bernie's stuff that he had. When Bernie did things, he could get more things in a space than anybody. He, he was to the extreme when he did things. He, he was brilliant. He had a brilliant, brilliant mind. And so I told him, well, I'm a driver, I'll drive that down. He had to fly down for something else, or I had to take the other car down. So he doesn't tell you, here's where the key is, you know, everything, this was hidden here, and this was hidden here, and, and this is the car, and you got to go do this, and you got to go pick up this here, and you can't tell anybody. And so, okay, I get in the car to take all this stuff to Florida. He didn't tell me the speedometer didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so here I am on a highway. I drove straight through down down to where he was back in that trailer or whatever on that person's farm yeah he was something so yeah i was totally he's so particular but then they were like <laughs> well, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the ADHD. And Bernie, if he was born now, they'd probably put on a lot of strong drugs to make him sit in his, his uh, seat. seat and not have any thoughts out of the box, which would have been a horrible disservice to everybody. And um, what I saw in Bernie is like 
when when we the rare times that we had extended times together even though i'm wiry i had a calming effect on it when i was with him he didn't care if the towels were straight or if something got stained or you know he was ocd we all we all know that i mean not that that's a bad thing it's just who he was and i really i analyze everything i think a lot of that stems from that he was born a very 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 sensitive good soul and he had a lot of conflict dad being one way, his mom being this other way. I t he told me when he was a teenager what his name is going to draw. They would be fighting so bad. He would just crank up the music and you know, you read these things about people and how we cope with things. And he but he stood it as like I boy or chess and he would just arrange things on the top of his chest, you know, and blast that music so he couldn't hear him fighting or go cry. So here to the world he was this great big in control he could move mountains and he knew everybody and there was anything that he couldn't do but then as extreme amazing as he was he was extremely extremely fragile and i think he had to do all that stuff <laughs> thank you to to keep from falling apart you know we all do things different ways so here's this big huggable guy. And the last time I saw him, I should, I should go on forever. Two years ago, I was in a very, 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 very dark suicidal depression, which sucks to hear from us. I was a born to depression. So I'm, I'm happy, and it took a lot to break me down, but I called him. I could not get out of my little condo in Nashville for three months. <laughs> that I was upset and couldn't fix it. He, he brought all these brochures and he put them on the counter and the whole time he was there he was going through ads and brochures. You know how he was. And me, normally I can take a lot and I was his come and I don't, I don't think he knew what, you know, we're, like, we were good friends. There's somewhere really on a deep level that we connected and I couldn't take it at that minute. We got into this yelling match and not or anything but he kind of had it and I he had to go and he forgot some of his shirts and I called him I said you forgot your shirts he said yeah mail them to me because I know if he didn't have his certain things it just wrecked his whole world you know he really uh the person in the expensive suit at the casinos can in charge of whatever or whatever he's doing nobody would think of that big handsome man his entrepreneurial spirit. I liked his, um, I, I should say, not like, but admired the entrepreneurial spirit. I liked the fact that he did so many things that uh, not being limited in any way. Um, but I, I just, uh, I'm not a religious person. Um, uh, I don't identify with any faith. My wife is Jewish, my son is still Jewish. But um, uh, I, I, I wonder, I just hope, because I know he was such a good soul, Yeah. <laughs> 
If he did yeah. half the things he said, he did more than most people. Sometimes the good story is the most important. Well, I'll speak to that because I met him in 1977 when the bouncers at my father's place, uh, the biggest one, was concerned about some guy that was coming that he had a beef with. And I said, who the hell could this guy be afraid of? Because I never saw anybody, this guy afraid of anybody. I'm going to take this off. We're far away, enough away, right? Um, and it was Bernie, of course. And, you know, for a number of years I heard lots of stories. And uh, then um, 1991, I went to Europe with him and met all the people in the stories telling the same stories. Yeah. So that's when I knew that it wasn't uh, fake. Yeah, now that's a better word than the one I was thinking of. <laughs> um, but Bernie and I traveled all over the place. Uh, he really uh, did a lot of things, saw a lot of people. He would go for a month to Australia. Um, we were planning to go to China, so he went for a month in ahead. He says, let me scope it out, so when you get there, we'll all know, we'll know where to go. And, uh, you know, uh, his bodyguarding days were primarily in his earlier days, but when we went to China, we ended up bodyguarding, or he ended up bodyguarding Michael Phelps and his mom. I have some photos, so that that's also true. And he stood, still hung around and had friends or celebrities, I think, that uh, uh, Chaz Palminteri just posted on his uh, legacy.com, and uh, I think Joe Piscopo will. And, uh, but he had a, a trick, because he wasn't a wealthy man. So how do you travel all over the world? And lots of tricks, actually. Um, one was that uh, for probably 20 some odd years, maybe 30, he was always dating a flight attendant. Somewhere in the world, he had a relationship with a flight attendant who was giving him buddy passes or significant other passes, so he would travel everywhere free or, or cheap. Um, I remember one, uh, that trip to Europe, we checked into a hotel. Well, first of all, that trip to Europe, we were supposed to go together. I had a flight to London. And a week before, he said, I'm going to Italy. You're going to have to meet me in, uh, in Germany. Wait, my flight's to London. You want me to meet you? Here? I don't know how to get to Germany. But uh, like Bonnie said, he was very particular and precise. And he gave me step-by-step -step directions to get from London to the jet foil to Belgium to get to the right track to get to the Burger King next to which is a post office where you get a <laughs> phone card, which I've never seen a phone card in 90 call and you call you the Holiday Inn in, um, I forget which town, maybe it was Salzburg, but uh, in any case, you call and you ask for Elisabeth. I won't be staying there, but she'll know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I did all that and it all worked out and then we checked into the hotel and they, he said he's with uh, United Airlines. He had a commercial, uh, he had a, a private plane license, he wasn't a commercial pilot, but he asked for the United Airlines discount. They said, okay, give me your flight, your um, pilot number. And uh, so he gave him the pilot number, which I learned is just a social security number. You never give out now, but, <laughs> and he got the flight discount, the, the airline discount. So just, he had, and then we went to a five-star spa. He still had the key from a room from a year prior and we used the spa. So he was able to travel and do very luxurious things uh, on a budget. Yeah. But uh, as, as was said, he took great care of, he loved his mother, was devastated when she died, right Gloria? And, uh, but took care of his father uh, till, till the end and was a very caring person. Took care of me in a lot of ways as I did him. We were friends for 44 years. Um, so I have lots more I could say, but I decided to just read what my son wrote. And, that, and my daughter, when she re read it, said she couldn't top it, so she's just going to sign on to this one. Uh, my son is uh, 20 years old, my daughter 21, um, and he wrote, Throughout my life, my father's introduced me to a large number of extremely interesting individuals from, from renowned businessmen, chefs with God-given talent, and superstars known all around the world. All of them were super cool to a young kid, but one thing is cool... Nothing is cooler to a young boy than, than, than this. And that is a big ass-kicking, joke-telling, story-sharing, dog-loving, Berlin wall-stealing, impulsive, karate black belt. 
wrap my childhood, my Uncle Bernie would fill me with wonder by sharing stories of ghosts in haunted hotels, meeting Chuck Norris in a fight, and even stopping a terrorist in Europe when he went back to school. There's no one else in my life whose story I would share with the same passion and energy as I would with Uncle Bernie's, and that's because of the excitement and passion he would put into those same stories. His ability to catch someone's ear with an interesting story was and always will be unmatched. As Uncle Bernie grew older and stopped kicking so many asses, I believe it was not because of his physical condition, condition, but because he realized he cared too much for others to kick butts. In my entire life, I've never seen two adults with the unique bond my father and him had. Uncle Bernie loved my father and our family just as much as we loved him, and that was a lot. In fact, the last thing he said to my sister and I guys ever need anything, even at 3 a.m., I'm there for you. I really wish I'd gotten a chance to thank him not only for caring so much for my family, but being for being such a good friend to my dad, which I'll, I will always be thank, thankful for. So thank you, Harrison and Shana. me at barryguten at gmail.com. Yeah, one word, no spaces, no 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 cap, doesn't matter. Yeah, no no hyphens or periods or anything or dashes or anything. Just B A R R Y G U T I N at B A R R Y G U T I N at gmail.com. I'll try to remember that so I do have the memory of the gold book, but I'd love to hear more stories about Bernie. This is so full of life. So what I'd like people to do now is just all that we heard sing in. Sink in. See how it resonated in your mind and in your heart. Think about something that you'd like to tell a friend or friend or person you meet at the gym and you get back. All about whispers of Eddie Bauer in the background. Yeah. Every piece of clothing he had, piece of luggage, piece of anything, was Eddie Bauer. In fact, I asked if they had an Eddie Bauer urn. It doesn't exist. It doesn't? <laughs> so the song is true. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you what it means to revere life. your tongue from evil, your lips from deceitful speech. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek shalom, that is wholeness, fullness, amity, and peace. And sincere. Rakeh shalom, Yorodah shalom, Yorodah shalom, when he perceives wholeness and peace. I'll 
recite the traditional memorial prayer, El Mali Rahman, to the one who is full of compassion. And then we'll say Kaddish. And then if you want, we'll come up close to the urn, touch it, you have some soil here, place it around. It's just a final way of saying goodbye. A last pass. A gentle pass. Together. The Lord is my shepherd, not on mine. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. find a place for you in a lasting home in our hearts, in the hearts of all those whom you touch with love. So traditionally, uh, we stand at this point in the service, so if you wish to, please do so. If not, just Bernie Coleman, the son of Lewis and Gloria, the Halacha, the Olamo, Bavor, the Nadru, the Kaba Azkarat Nishmato, the Gun Aden, the Yemlu Hato, Anna Balharachamim, Hati Rehu, the Setik, and the Fetli Olamim, the Strobitur, a high met Nishmato. Adonai hu nafabato v'yanuach v'shalom al mitzkavo v'nomar amen. May the source of life and the fountain of all being open our hearts to compassion and our eyes to wisdom that we may glimpse in perfect peace and sadness the way of all things. May Bernie's memory be a blessing for us and may we never let the light of his love grow dim in our hearts. May we remember all Bernie's worthy and righteous deeds so that Bernie's memory be bound forever in the bond of life. God is our source and God our destination. God is our beginning and God is our end. May Bernie's death awaken us to this abiding truth that the bond of love we shared and share be not shattered in sorrow. And may Bernie rest in peace in our hearts forever. And let us say, Amen. We conclude with the Kaddish prayer. The Kaddish prayer is a prayer of praise to God. And its original source was in the study hall of the rabbis of the Talmud. When they completed their study of scripture and its exposition, the study of Torah, they would rise and say a prayer very similar to our time.
for being here, for helping uh, each other remember Bernie, and also for teaching me about a really wonderful soul. And also 